Damien and I are on our way to Memphis. We're making this eight hour drive after Zach Randolph, an NBA player, had called me about a little pit bull mix who had been trapped in a sewage pipe for two days. So this is your right, first this is... your first trip as a free man. As a free man, yeah. Wow. Very happy about wow. it too. <laughs> So Zach suggested that we meet up with him at the drainage pipe where this little dog was trapped. Let's go check it out. Hey, Tia, how you doing? They're a stereotype with, with athletes and dogs. And that's the reason why I want people to see a person like myself. I love these dogs and, and we'll do anything for this breed. Damien, you look like a Freshly off parole, we have to announce that. Congratulations. Congratulations. This is Connie, this is Caitlin, this is Mario. Hey, good to meet you. So then you hurt the dog's crying. We heard the dog crying. Immediately I went to look for where the cry was coming from and I noticed that there was a ditch beside me. There was a pipe sticking out of the ditch and I assumed that's where the dog was. So inside here? Yes, there's a pipe that runs under. And he had to be there. They, they were saying two days. I think he was there longer. Mario, a city worker, was the first responder on the scene. We dug out this whole bank and started busting the top of the wow. pipe out. Once they got this big concrete pipe cut in half, then the mud and the slush started pouring down. The dirt started getting so thick that it started crushing It's still unbelievable that he even managed to survive. How long did it take collectively when you started to get him out? Five to six hours. When the dog was freed from the pipe, the dog was extremely scared, just skinny and scarred up. Oh, he looked pretty bad. I did not realize it was this big of a rescue effort. A lot of dog lovers were here that day. A lot of people didn't leave. They stayed the whole oh, time. Eh. Yeah. Did cry. <laughs> yep. Wow. I mean, it's obvious that this little dog has been to hell and back. But hopefully, with us getting involved, we're that one little hope that he needs to someday getting a home of his own. Going into the Memphis shelter, or any animal shelter for that matter, you just never know what to expect. Ultimately, until we get eyes on the dog ourselves, we just don't know. And finally, when we saw him, it was just sad. Hi, baby. Oh, buddy. Hey, little man. You know, that comes, oh, he's scared. This poor little dog was just scared to death, just curled up at the back of his kennel. It was just heartbreaking. You could tell by his behavior, like the ear is going back. It's just, he's nervous. He's very nervous. Yeah, he's nervous, you know. You know, you could tell that he was so traumatized at what he had been through. He wouldn't even get up to walk out the door on his own. He's, he's, he's very nervous. He's scared, he's kind of nervous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. OK, it's OK. There we go. OK, let me, yeah. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. okay. Going to a good home, buddy. It touched me to to see this see this dog alive and and see that it's about to go to New Orleans with Tia to get rehabilitated to know what it's to be like to be loved and have a home and now it's to get to have another life and get time and that's what it needs.